Do you hear the Lord speaking to your heart this morning? Saying there is more. There is more than having your name on the roll of the church that I require of you. There is more than doing what you've always done that I require of you. There is more that I've placed in you, gifts and graces, and I require that you would use them. Anybody have a yes in your spirit this morning? Anybody hear the Lord calling you for more, calling you to greater, calling you higher, calling you for bigger? Anybody hear the Lord calling you? He said, there is more, there is more that I require of you. But the God that I serve is a gentleman. The God that I serve doesn't just bogart. He doesn't just shove me around, doesn't push you around, doesn't force himself on us. Will your heart, will your soul say yes? He'll take a no, but his desire is for you to have a yes, for me to have a yes, for us to have a yes. I don't know about you, but I remember the word of God that says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you say you will, then you better. Amen. The Lord is calling us. He is calling us higher. And there is more. And he requires of us. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate the worship ministry. Celebrate the visitation of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the true and living God is in this place. Would you pray with me, Father, even right now? As your water is troubled, we pray that you would send out your light and your truth we might behold wondrous things out of this, God, your word. Come now, O oh Lord, and your word bless. Come right now, Holy Ghost, you're the preacher. Come and speak and give your word much success. Spirit of holiness, don't let any of us, not the youngest babe or the eldest saint, leave this place the same way we came. Change and transform us. Shift us. Elevate our hearts and our minds. Open our spirits. Challenge us. Convict us. Convert us. Convince us. Even right now, God, I pray that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. For Father, you and you alone, you are my strength. God, you're my redeemer. Lord, you are my every, every everything is in the marvelous the matchless name of jesus he's the resurrected christ we pray god we do it with thanksgiving and faith we count it done amen and amen there is then heartbreak hotel depending on your generation and you don't have to tell on yourself. You might remember Elvis Presley taking you to the Heartbreak Hotel. For others of us, you remember Whitney Houston, Faith Evans, and Kelly Price. Amen. You understand then that Mariah Carey and Jay-Z talked about the Heartbreaker and uh, uh, Gloria Estefan with NSYNC talked about you being the music of my heart. Uh, I don't know about you, but anytime I think about uh, the five heartbeats, I can't think about the five heartbeats without hearing. Is there a, a heart? Is there a heart? Is there a heart in the house tonight? 
stand up. Amen. Uh, the truth of the matter is uh, I could spend all day talking about uh, the number of times we have heard folks singing about, talking about, teaching about, preaching about uh, ah, the heart. Amen. In fact, uh, that question, will you say yes uh, in this season of love and Valentine's Day? Uh, many of us have had the opportunity to say yes with all of the hearts and the flowers. Some of y'all are still enjoying Valentine's Day. Amen. And we bless God for that. Is there a heart? Is there a heart in the house this morning? Uh, even as we partner with the American Heart Association and we observe Go Red Sunday here at Clinton, it's happened or happening or will happen in the month of February all around the world to bring attention to heart disease in women. And so this morning, the Holy Spirit led us uh, to this question. You'll hear it again. Is there a heart? Is there a heart in the house this morning? Uh, let me see how many hearts are in the house. Uh, anybody got a heart? Uh, let me see your hand. If you have a heart, uh, ah, you have a heart, then guess what? Uh, this word then is for you uh, because this morning we want to talk about uh, a matter of the heart. Amen. Uh, a matter of the heart. Uh, notice with me again our text, Proverbs chapter chapter four. I want to just lift up. That was a short verse. Proverbs four, beginning at verse number 20. When you have it, say amen. It's on the screen. God bless you. Thank you to the team uh, who do it. Uh, this in Proverbs chapter four, it's a whole teaching. So as we lift up these few verses, you know that your homework is to review, to read, to meditate, to pray on, and to allow all that is in Proverbs four to permeate your heart and your mind. You will be blessed by this chapter. It is a chapter that continues some instruction that has been given. And I love the way the writer of Proverbs speaks oftentimes, my child, my children, anybody have a mother or a father, a grandmother, a grandfather, an auntie, an uncle, a godmother, a godfather, a neighbor who took the time to talk to you, to school you, to share some wisdom with you. You ought to just give God a hand of praise that you had that in your life. Life. Uh, they didn't come up with it. That wisdom then comes from the book of Proverbs. We see it then here in the word of God, this fatherly advice. When you study it, that's the way you will see it. You'll see then that the writer begins in Proverbs 4 saying that this is so important. What the writer has to say in this chapter chapter, it's so important that your life depends on it. Find somebody and tell them your life depends on this. The truth is your life does depend on the health of your physical heart. Amen, somebody? Literally, your life depends on the physical health of your heart. But the writer in Proverbs is telling us something else about our heart and how important it is. In Proverbs chapter 20, chapter 4, verse 20, my child, pay attention to what I say and listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Uh, there's a lot to distract us. There's a lot to deter us. There's a lot of noise in the culture. Amen. There's a lot of noise in society. The writer said, don't, don't let this fall deep in your heart. Your life depends on it. For these words, the writer says, has the ability to bring life to 
to those who find these and healing to your whole body. These words then can fix any and everything that ever comes your way. It's important for us to recognize then what the writer is really trying to say. Keep your heart then with all diligence. Guard your heart because what happens in your heart will determine the entire course of your life. Somebody will say, Lord, have mercy. Is there a heart? Is there a heart in the house? Ah, here then uh, we realize that the writer of Proverbs is not referring to uh, our physical heart, uh, that marvelous pump that sends blood to all the other parts of the body. Rather, the writer uh, is using the term heart spiritually. And whenever scripture speaks of the heart spiritually, it is referring to our inner life. You know, that is, it is in and talking about uh, the part of us that includes then uh, our intellect, uh, our emotion, and our will. Did you hear what I said? Uh, anytime the word of God uh, speaks about your heart, uh, uh, the word of God is not talking about your physical body. You're going to get some of that today too. Amen. But the word of God is talking about your spiritual innermost part, talking then about the three parts that make Make up what the Bible is talking about, your intellect. Uh, 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 your emotion and your will. Uh, they were asking, uh, will you say yes? That's an act of the will to say yes to God. Amen. Uh, that we think through things and make decisions. Uh, and yes, beloved, uh, for those of you who talk about some of us who are part of the tissue brigade, uh, some of us who um, find our eyes leaking on the regular, uh, our emotion uh, is not not a dirty word. Amen. In fact, somebody said, I second that emotion. Amen. It's not a dirty word. In fact, it is one of the dimensions of the human heart from a spiritual standpoint. Then it is, the writer is saying, keep or literally guard your inner life. Amen. How many of you know we spend a lot of time on our external? Amen. We spend a lot of time on our lips, our hips, our fingertips, our toes, our eyes, our hair, dare I say, go ahead and whip it. Amen. If you got it, you may as well whip it and flaunt it. Brother Danny Winborn, I am not messing with you. I promise I'm not. I just looked over there and said, Lord, he probably is going to say, there she goes again. It's, <laughs> it's to guard your, it's an inside joke, but it's not that inside for some of y'all. Bruce and Tim and Gavin. You started it. If you hadn't looked at me like that, I would have left it alone. <laughs> In the word of God, we are told to guard our heart with all diligence. This denotes a place of emphasis, even urgency. It is as if the writer is saying, you'll find it necessary in life to guard a whole lot of things, amen, that pertain to you personally, your property, amen. Many of us have some sort of alarm system to make sure that nobody gets our stuff, amen. That's a legitimate need to guard, amen, to guard your property. Um, many of us, you roll up on us the wrong way. Some of us have some mace in our bag. Some of us, like Medea, have discovered that peace is, can be steel and made of steel. Roll up on us the wrong way on the wrong day, and you will find out we roll with two friends, Mr. Smith and Mr. Wesson. Okay, y'all understand that sometimes there is a need to guard your stuff and your physical property, amen. But here the writer is saying that you may even need to guard your reputation. How many of you know ah, that it is your name really is the only thing that you truly own, amen? 
Atlanta. And so guarding, I learned this as a young girl to be careful where you go, be careful what you do, be careful how you treat people, be careful what you allow people to see you do. And oh, by the way, my mother used to say, there are people who see you that you don't even know are looking. You better guard your reputation. Uh, yet here, there is one thing more important than my stuff, uh, more important than my physical self, uh, and more important even than my self-image. Amen. Uh, the, art, the author then is talking to us about um, our heart, our inner life. Beyond all else, guard your inner life. And the reason for this urgent admonition is made clear. Look at what the text says uh, in verse Number 23, because out of your heart flows then the issues of life. You better guard your heart, beloved. In other words, he's saying to us, a person is made or broken by what happens, not outside of us. Can I get a witness? What really challenges us, what really breaks us, what really changes us is what happens in inside of the chambers of our heart in the secret place that nobody can see or even judge. But he said, you better guard that place. He's reminding us that everyone's life has challenges and changes. All of us are going to have issues with our stuff, issues with our physical safety, and sometimes even issues with our self-image. But what matters most is what happens in our heart. There are three things that I just want to ask you to note with me, and I'm going to be out of your way this morning uh, to really pay attention to life's most monumental uh, tide-turning issues. And then uh, I want to remind myself and you that if we are really serious about coming out of this game called life as winners, uh, uh, that we will then uh, have to pay close attention and to guard our heart and deal with them accordingly. First and foremost, beloved, we're talking about matters of the heart. Character is a matter of the heart. Can I get a witness? A character, oftentimes you see what I do and you hear what I say, but long before I do what I do, long before I open my mouth to say what I say, I've had to think about it. I've had to wrestle with it on the inside. The Bible leads no question that character is a matter of the heart. He keeps studying in Proverbs 23 and 7. We read as he or she thinks in his or her heart, so he or she is. In other words, I make up my mind about how far I'm going to go in this life. I decide what I'm going to accomplish or not by my inside, what I say to myself what I say about myself, what I think about myself. I wonder if I have any witnesses in the house who will testify that there was a time when I didn't feel so good about myself. I, I didn't think so highly of myself. I didn't recognize who I was in God. And because I didn't think that well of myself, I didn't act that well on behalf of myself. I did some things, went some places, hung out with some folk uh, that weren't in my best interest uh, because I did not have my own best interest in heart. Uh, I, I want you to understand, beloved, uh, Marcus Aurelius said the soul is dyed the color of its thoughts. Uh, is there a heart in the house this morning? Uh, ah, what color is uh, your soul uh, this morning? Uh, Emerson said a man is uh, what he thinks about all day long. Uh, what do you think about all day long, baby. Uh, uh, what's on your mind most of the time? Uh, uh, just stare straight ahead in the name of Jesus. Uh, don't look to the left and don't look to the right. Uh, and if your neighbor is looking at you too heavy, uh, tell your neighbor, don't judge me. Don't judge me. The truth of the matter is that it's important for us to understand an anonymous homespun poet expressed this matter in this way with these little lines. I have a house inside of me, a house that others seldom see. 
It has a door through which none pass and windows, but they are not made of glass. Where do you live? Ask the folks that I meet. And then I say on such a such street, but still I know what's really me lives in a house that folk can never see. The truth of the matter is character uh, does matter. It is a matter of, uh, of the heart. The enemy of your soul and mind tries constantly to blind us to the reality that character matters, that character is a matter of the heart. He attempts day in and day out to lure us uh, into the false notion that unholy, God-dishonoring desires and attitudes aren't so bad as long as we keep them bottled up inside as long as we keep the lid on them as long as we keep them hidden from everybody else but Jesus took a different perspective Jesus in Matthew 15 verses 19 and 20 said for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. I don't know, but I'm on my own street right here. One of life's greatest desires is that of convincing ourselves, Lord have mercy, that we're okay, simply because we keep up a good outward experience, an outward appearance. Do I have any witnesses that you have learned and perfected the art of putting on a happy face, that you have learned how to look like everything is well, when the truth is it's all going to hell, that you have learned to talk churchology. You have learned to talk about how blessed and highly favored you are when the truth of the matter is it's all jacked up and you're not sure how to get out of it. I wonder if I'm the only one who has majored in putting on a happy face, making it look like something that is not. My daddy used to say that you can put lipstick and pearls on a pig. The truth is, it's still a pig. So some of us, amen, uh, must recognize uh, that it doesn't matter how well we dress. Uh, it doesn't how many, no, matter how many church words we know. Uh, it doesn't matter how good we are uh, at quoting scripture, uh, that if what's on the inside uh, doesn't reflect the glory of God, uh, that character uh, is a matter of the heart. Uh, my motivations for what I do uh, begin in my heart. Uh, my desire uh, for possession position and power for fame and fortune is a matter of the heart. Whether or not I am acquainted with the truth is a matter of the heart. Character then is a matter of the heart. And while the enemy wants us to somehow believe that uh, as long as you can dress it up and smooth it over, that it's all right. Guard your heart, because character is a matter of the heart. It doesn't matter how good we are at facades. It doesn't matter how adept we are at being fake. It doesn't matter at how well we have gotten at the game of phoniness. The truth of the matter is you can't fake character. Amen. You can't fake character. It doesn't matter how impressive, how admirable my outside is. If my heart harbors what is sorry, what is nasty, what is dirty, what is unfair, what is unholy, uh, if my heart harbors bias and hatred, if my heart harbors gossip and tearing others down, the truth of the matter is I am then marked as reprobate in the mind of God. That means that I know better, but I don't want to be better. I said it. Character is a matter 
of the heart. It's important for us to understand that these sins of the heart contaminate not just us inwardly, but these things also have an outward ruination, a manifestation as well. Jesus reminds us in Matthew 12, 35, that a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things and an evil person out of the evil treasure bringing out of their hearts, they produce evil things. Uh, you ought to tell your neighbor, just check the fruit. Amen. Check the fruit. Uh, not to be judging, but the truth of the matter is character. What's in you uh, is coming out of you. Amen. What is in you is coming out of you one way or to other, as my grandmama would say, is coming out of you. Amen. It's important for us to recognize that sometimes we see individuals who we consider famous uh, uh, persons in the culture who when we find out that they have somehow fallen, that they have somehow suffered some moral defeat, uh, we manage to shake our heads and say, uh, wow, wasn't that a sudden tragedy? Uh, where did that come from? Uh, I wonder what happened to him or her uh, when the truth of the matter is, if we knew the whole story, uh, we would see that it wasn't sudden at all. How many of you know you don't suddenly fall into bed with somebody that's not your spouse? Hello? How many of you know you don't suddenly fall into snorting something up your nose or shooting it in your vein? How many of you know you don't suddenly tell an untruth that ruins somebody else's lives? How many of you know none of that stuff happens suddenly? So while I know that a lot of my stories, when I was a lot younger, Brother Odell, uh, uh, Brother O.W. started with what had happened was, the truth of the matter is, long before what happened happened, I made up my mind, amen, this is my intellect, amen, my emotions and my will. Uh, anybody ever let their emotions get the best of them? Anybody ever end up doing something that you had no business doing because your emotions carried you away? Oh, praise God. All these saved people in the house. Listen, I'm in the wrong church. I need to go someplace else because y'all too saved, too sanctified, too Holy Ghost filled, too fire baptized for me. Lord knows I would never want y'all to know. Amen. The skeletons in my closet. How many of y'all got some live bodies still rattling around? Come on, y'all. Some of us still got some live. We still got some stuff that we're wrestling with. And yet we recognize that character is a matter of the heart. Uh, here the writer in Proverbs is making it clear your life depends on what's in your heart because your character will determine your destiny. Say amen, somebody. Not just then is my character, your character, our character, a matter of the heart. But guess what? Uh, somebody said uh, that happiness is predicated on what happens to you. Uh, joy and contentment have a different source. I know somebody said, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And while we sing that in worship, uh, oftentimes by the time we get to the parking lot, we recognize that we are still discontented, unhappy, dissatisfied. Uh, tell your neighbor, contentment is a matter of the heart. Uh, if you truly want to be content in life, uh, uh, not happy because of what happens to you, but content. Uh, Paul said, I have learned whether to abound, that means to have a whole lot, or to be abased. Uh, I've learned whatever lot I find myself in, therein to be content, to be satisfied. Uh, anybody satisfied with Jesus this morning? Uh, uh, the Bible doesn't just teach us that character is a matter of the heart. It's clear that contentment is a matter of the heart. To be at peace inwardly is a wonderful thing. First Timothy 6, 6 tells us godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Everybody wants to have that inner sense of fulfillment and peace that we call contentment. And God desires that for you and for me. But the only way that contentment can be experienced is for our heart to be right with God and with other people. Did you hear what I said? The only way, the only way, Sister Gina, go ahead and sing it. There is no other way. Amen. There is no other way. The only way 
So when I often encounter people who are so unhappy, just bitter, mad, upset, angry all the time, no matter how right something is, there's always something wrong with it. Amen. You know anybody like that? Uh, no matter how blessed they are, uh, no matter how God moves in their life, uh, no matter how God answers their prayers, uh, no matter how his favor falls, uh, it's never enough. Uh, it's never good enough. Uh, it's still something else wrong. Uh, their theme song is, oh, Zion, what's the matter? now. Every time you see them, uh, as soon as they open their mouth, uh, you feel 10, uh, uh, 10 clicks of energy fall out of you, uh, that they suck the life out of the room and out of the fellowship. Why? Uh, because they are miserable. Uh, and how many of you know it's true uh, that misery loves company? Uh, I know you know on your job uh, at least one person uh, that when you see them coming, uh, you just want to run. Ah, somewhere uh, in our civic uh, associations, uh, there's one person uh, that no matter how tight the plan, uh, because it's not their plan, uh, they don't support the plan. Uh, they have a case of NIH uh, not invented here. Uh, I know uh, that I know that I know uh, that that level of discontentment uh, will cause us to be negative and to never be able truly to worship and to be grateful. It's important for us to recognize that while yes, circumstances do impact us, we do experience because we are emotional people, moments of despair and distress and disappointment. But is there a heart in the house? We can't live there. You can't live at despair. You can't live in disappointment. You can't live in distress and still claim to be the people of God. We don't discount circumstance. Surely they impact us, but circumstances are not decisive. How many of you know your circumstance can change? Amen. How many of you know that your circumstances can change? Parenthetically, let me give you this little tip. If you want your circumstances to change, Ah, allow the Lord to change your heart and change your mind. If you want your circumstances to change, start allowing the joy of the Lord to be your strength. If you want your circumstances to change, learn how to praise God from whom all blessings flow, no matter what it looks like. Baby, if you want your circumstances to change, start worshiping God before you see the blessing. Start blessing him before you get healing. Start honoring him before the door opens and you get a new job. Uh, uh, start speaking well of him while you're still catching hell. Uh, uh, while the doctor is still waiting on the test, uh, begin to declare that I am healed. Ah, uh, While you're waiting on a prognosis, uh, uh, begin to say uh, that I will live and not die uh, because that's what the word of God says. Uh, before you go in uh, uh, to somebody who's got to make a decision uh, about your life, uh, stand in the mirror uh, and say to yourself, uh, self, uh, I'm the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, uh, say to yourself, uh, uh, when debt gets too heavy, uh, uh, God promised me uh, that I'm going to be the lender uh, and not the borrower. Uh, start speaking over yourself. Uh, uh, start having an attitude of gratitude. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, uh, uh, the first thing you do uh, is say, God, I thank you. Uh, it's another day's journey. Uh, and and I'm glad about it. Ah, you ought to get up saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will. I don't care what anybody else does. I will. I will rejoice. I don't care what I'm facing on my job. I'm going in there, skipping to the loo. I'm going in there with a smile on my face. I'm speaking to everybody. Uh, uh, who's anybody? Uh, I'm talking uh, to the folk who look like uh, nobody. Uh, why? Uh, uh, because I've got uh, a secret, uh, and that is uh, that I've got uh, the joy, joy, joy uh, down in my heart. Uh, I've got uh, the joy, joy, joy uh, 
down in my heart. Uh, I've got the joy, joy, joy uh, of Jesus down in my heart. Uh, and come what may uh, from day to day, uh, sickness may come, uh, uh, pain may come, uh, friends may leave. Uh, ah, the bottom might fall out financially, uh, but it's down in my heart, uh, it's down in my heart, uh, it's down in my heart to stay, uh, that when you, uh, uh, beloved, make up your mind, uh, that it's not about happiness, uh, but it's about the joy of the Lord. Uh, it's about a life filled with purpose. Uh, it's about being able to look back honestly over your life uh, and to recognize uh, that God saved you. Uh, he saved each and every one of us. So what he saved me from might be different than what he saved you from and what he saved your neighbor from. But if you've been saved by God, if he has preserved your life, uh, if he has provided for you, uh, you ought to this morning guard your heart uh, and make sure uh, that you don't let the enemy steal your joy. Uh, this joy I have. This joy I have. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. Uh, and the world has no right uh, uh, to take it away. Your contentment is a matter of your heart. Don't you dare let anybody think that they've got to power over you, that they govern your joy. How dare anybody think that they're all that? Not in my life. The devil is a liar. It's about what's on the inside of you. Is there a heart? Is there a heart in the house this morning? Some time ago, I heard a fable about this little mouse, Brother Joe, who was in a constant state of discontent because of his fear of the cat. One day, a, a magician came along and changed the little mouse into a cat, thinking that the little creature's fears would forever be banished. But then the cat was afraid of the dog. So the magician changed him into a dog. Then he was afraid of a tiger. So the magician turned him into a tiger. Then that tiger was afraid of the hunter. And at that, the musician changed him back into a mouse. He said, be a mouse again. I can't help you because you only have the heart of a mouse. What kind of heart do you have today? Is there a heart in the house? If I'm a child of the most high God, if I'm an heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus, if the earth is his and everything in it belongs to him, why would I walk around scurred like a mouse? Why would I walk around living beneath my privilege? Forgetting that contentment is a matter of the heart. I got to close. There's one more thing I want you to remember. I want you to know that character is a matter of the heart. This morning, your contentment, that joy, uh, that's a matter of your heart. The last thing is that your conquest, whether or not you win, that's a matter of the heart. Yes, character. Yes, contentment. But conquest. First Timothy 6, 12. We're told to fight the good fight of faith. And in Romans 8, 37, Paul declared that in all these things, I don't know what things you have to deal with. My things are different than you. Whatever the these things is, for some of us, it's our health right now. For some of us, it's our wealth. It's our financial situation. For still others of us, it's our career. It's our vocation. For still others, it's our marriage and our relationship status. For still others, it's our children and where they are and the decisions they're making. For still others, it's our educational pursuits. For still others, it's our hopes and our dreams. For still others, it's the organization that God birthed in us and called us to lead. Whatever your, these things are, the word promised him that you are more than a conqueror through him that loved us. His name is Christ Jesus. If God lets us live any length of time at all on this earth, it is inevitable, beloved, that we're gonna find ourselves engaged in some kind of conflict. Can I get a witness? There are battles to be fought 
even against the tyranny of our own moods and emotions. Anybody willing to testify that sometimes you can't even stand yourself? That sometimes you get on your last nerve? That sometimes you don't even know why you're thinking the way you're thinking or doing what you're doing? Ah, that it's not just outside. I got to deal with the tyranny of me. And then that there are personal handicaps of all kinds that I've got to deal with. Sometimes there are handicaps that I have that are visible that other people can see that I lack an ability, but oftentimes what's really unseen is really the stuff that is heavy and trips me up. We have battles in us, around us, over us. Ah, there are battles to be fought against temptations of all sorts. Anybody right now wrestling with temptation of some kind? You recognize that it's not of God, from God, for God doesn't reflect his glory and, let your, and yet your flesh is saying, psst. Y'all don't get talked to like that? Like your flesh don't talk to you like that? Your flesh don't ever say, psst. Look at that. Wow. Taste this. Wow. Go there. Psst. All of us. All of us face temptation. Aren't you glad that Christ suffered every temptation? Amen. And even though he didn't get in, give into it, he knows what it's like to be tempted. Amen. I don't know about you. Conquest, your winning, my winning, our winning is a matter of the heart. If we're going to be victorious in this life, we have to understand that conquest is, in the final analysis, a matter of the heart. It's important for us then to understand that whether or not we win in the end is conditioned on our heart and how we are able to guard our heart. It's important for us to recognize then that if our heart is in tune with what God desires, then everything will in fact be all right. And may I tell you, beloved, that before Paul was able to declare in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. The truth of the matter is that Paul had to fight. Amen. And the truth of the matter is, beloved, before he could declare that he's finished his course. Uh, he had to run a race. Amen. Uh, he had to do it with patience. Uh, can I tell you, beloved, that whether or not you and I win, uh, then is conditioned upon our heart. Uh, perhaps that's why Paul said this, lay aside uh, every weight and the sin that does so easily trip you up. How many of you know that you need to be able to run uh, unfettered? Any track runners in the house? Uh, any football players in the house? Lacrosse, soccer, uh, you need to be able able uh, to be as light as you can. Uh, the truth of the matter is, if you want to win, then you've got to deal with your sin. I said it. Uh, amen. Hunt your neighbor and say, I got to deal with mine and you got to deal with yours. Uh, amen. If you really want to win, uh, uh, the beginning of sin, uh, it doesn't begin by what we see, by what we hear, by what we smell, by what we taste. The beginning of sin uh, is in our heart. Uh, it's in our mind. Uh, it's in our will. Amen. Uh, I've got to deal with the battle for my mind. I've got to deal with the battle for my appetite, my flesh. I've got to gain mastery over this body of mine. Anybody understand that if you're going to win, you're going to have to fight. Amen. Anybody fighting right now? Some of us fight the temptation because in the middle of the night, the refrigerator says, amen. In the middle of the night, the microwave starts talking. In the middle of the night, sometimes uh, the app lights up on your phone that says, look at this. I know I'm not the only one who has come to the place to understand that if I'm going to be able to sing that victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine, that I'm going to have to be prepared to fight some battles. Uh, if you're fighting a battle right now, beloved, whether it's something in your heart heart, in your mind, in your spirit, in your flesh, or if it's conflict in your life external to you, you're in a struggle on your job, dealing with challenges in your marriage and in your relationships, you can win this morning. I stop by to tell you it's a matter of the heart, never mind the heart of the other person, because the truth is many of us think that we are spiritual cardiologists. We think that we're the ones who get to 
check out everybody else's heart. Uh, how many of you know uh, that if you have a heart uh, in your own house, uh, you got to deal with your own heart. Amen. Uh, that's your business. Uh, you tend to your business uh, and leave mine what alone. Uh, come on, somebody. If you want to win uh, and you can win with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you have to recognize then the nature of the fight. That is part of the design. But then you have to make some choices. Is there a heart? Is there a heart in the house? Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart above all else. Because out of it flows the issues of life. Your life depends on the condition of your heart. How's your heart today? How's your heart today? What's my real character? Who am I when nobody is looking or when I think they're not? 